What's up guys, your man Chef from Off Down back here with another video. Today we're talking about how hip hop is not dead and how people over exaggerate when they say hip hop is a excuse me, a lost cause in the genre. Before the video starts, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. I got new videos coming pretty much every day. Check out my last couple of videos, Bruno Mars, The Decade of Dominance, Why Life is Good, Will Drake Future probably will hit number one next week. And when you talk about hip hop being dead, you talk to people that are older. My parents, of course, and people I work with that are, are in their 30s and 40s. They say hip hop is not like it used to be. And it's not like when it was when Nelly was high, Ja Rule, 50 Cent. And they grew up in the 90s or early 2000s. Hip hop people say it's not the same as when Pac and NWA were roaming around the streets. And some people go back to LL Cool J's days. You know, hip hop is not the same. And although they're right about sometimes lyricism not being the best quality as it used to be, there are still some decent hip hop artists. They they blend my generation to a generation of lean and molly and coke heads that sell and use the same drugs. They're abusing women. They're abusing themselves. They spend their money frivolously and wind up broke. But the question is, they act like drugs are new to hip hop. There are plenty of rappers who have overdosed. There are plenty of rappers who were rapping in their heyday that are broke and didn't spend their money correctly. So, first of all, financial stability has always been a problem with rappers, period. It didn't just happen overnight. I hate to say it, but if maybe if Tupac and Biggie never died, I would hate to see how they would wind up broke off of Suge Knights and Dr. Dre and Diddy screwing them over in record executive contracts. Their albums were certified diamond after they died, yes, and they made a lot of money over merchandise and CD sales and single sales with them. But how much would they really have gotten if they were still alive? Diddy would have populated most of it like he did with Mace and he did a bad deal with some other 112 and other artists on his label. So Diddy is known to take a lot of money where his artists are left out cold to dry. Dr. Dre is a little more trustworthy. I mean, Eminem 50 Cent don't have any financial troubles per se. Well, 50 Cent has some, but it's to his own doing. The game has some complaints about Dre. And for the most part, Snoop Dogg has been okay with Dre, but he did have a riff early on. But let's not forget about NWA and their beef with Dre and the way that he did them. So, when we look at it, financials isn't anything different at all. Let's talk about the music and style. They say you can't understand a lot of the rappers. And I agree, some of them you can't understand. Some rappers are literally melodic type rappers who are just singing chrono over beats. They have no lyricism at all. And it's basically big, bombastic trap beats. But they keep forgetting there's still a decent amount of mainstream artists today who you can clearly understand still rap and have cadence flows still have clever lyrics. Travis Scott's an experimental artist with trap beats, but you can still understand him. He has clever lyricism. J. Cole and Kendrick are also the ones people cite usually, but they say they're the only two in the mainstream and that they're not as big as they are. But my argument was this. Kendrick Lamar had some of the biggest albums of the decade, and J. Cole just came off his biggest year yet with Middle Child peaking at number four, the London peaking at number 12, and a lot with 21 Savage peaking at number 12. He just won a Grammy Award for the first time in his career. And we look at J. Cole's album sales. His album is third, three times platinum. His album is two times platinum. He has three other albums that are platinum. You look at Kendrick Lamar, his album, he has two albums that are three times platinum. He has some of the best selling albums of the whole decade. Damn selling three million copies, beating out Ed Sheeran and Drake and The Weeknd in the same year. So let's not pretend that old school lyricism and clever lines with traditional beats still doesn't sell hip hop. Logic before his whole I want to be Eminem rap fast type deal happened. He was another one of those artists. Denzel Curry is a trap artist with decent lyricism and beats. So there's a number of artists you can pick out YNBN Corday who's blowing up currently. Lil Skies has some deep content, even though he's one of the newer rappers, the new wave. You know, uh, Chance the Rapper before the big day, he was a pretty good rapper. I mean, Juice, Cocoa Butter Kisses, Mixtape, um, What's the other one? The point is Chance the Rapper has some decent cuts. No problem. So yes, Chance the Rapper was another part of those rappers who had some type of deep lyrical connection with the fan base and wasn't always mumbling. He did have a little melodic style to him, but you can understand him clearly. So to say that all the rappers today are mumble rappers and they all just abuse Molly and Lean and they don't have any future, it's absurd because although there's a subgenre of Lil Uzi Verts and you know Trippy Reds and Juice World R.I.P. and all those people, you also have people like Ski Mask Slump Guard, who's also like that, but he has some clever punch punch lines and play like that as well. Lil Baby ain't gonna do these too much auto-tune. They are Young Thug and Lil Wayne clones. But that's just part of the genre. The biggest rappers always will influence the new generation. 
You can at one point you can understand Lil Wayne. He has some hard hitting assemblies in comparison. Young Jeezy, T.I., yeah, Ludacris, yeah, Little John. You had all these big names in the early two thousands. Well, what came out of that is the Crunk era kind of dialed down. The Lantern went back to high bombastic beats, and NBA Young Boys is another example. A lot of people do. Some people do overrate him. Some people do underrate him. But NBA Youngboy does tell stories in his music. He's a decent artist. And he's only twenty years old. So before you say that all rappers today are are basically pointless and they are just abusing Molly, Lean, and other drugs that I can't pronounce, you have to look at what we have currently. And you gotta understand the underground scene has always had an underwealth of great talent that never blew up. And that's your fault, the listener. Because instead of screaming, instead of hate watching and hate screaming these artists and continuing to click on their Instagram page and laugh out dummy are like little pump like you do for him. You could check out your local artists or underground artists with only 200,000 followers, but you don't because you don't want to hear new music. You want to complain about the top dogs. So while it's more fun to make fun of Lil Yachty and Lil Pump and make fun of all these new guys, Lil Nas X, and you're just saying that he's basically here today, gone tomorrow, go check out some of your local artists. Go check out some more hard-hitting artists. Or go release some old school artists. You know T.I. is still making albums. The Game still makes albums. There's a lot of old school artists still making artists. I mean, still making albums. You guys just aren't buying them. Anyway, that's all I got to say. It's your man, Chef Moffat Dome. Please go check out that new Fetty Wap album. It's pretty good. I mean, hey, he's a singer, rapper, or whatever, but I think his style is pretty good. You can understand him pretty much, and he has a decent message in his music. He doesn't want to harm anybody. He's just trying to have fun, trying to have a vibe. Anyway, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. This man, Chef Moffat Dome. Salute.